Hey Warriors, welcome back, and if you're new to our channel, we're glad to have you with us. As furniture flippers, we're always on the lookout for drab furniture that we can pick up for free or very inexpensively. We recently picked up this entire load of furniture for free. Now if you're a DIYer, you may have furniture in your own home that just seems drab and ready for a makeover. And if you're a furniture flipper, or you'd like to try your hand at flipping furniture, this video's for you. Today, we're going to take this drab dresser and nightstand and flip it into a great set for around $50 to use in your own home or to sell for great profits. Let's get flipping. We're Jim and Cindy, and we're inviting you to come along on our journey of furniture makeovers. So the first steps in any furniture makeover is to remove the hardware and thoroughly clean the piece. You wanna make sure that you're using a degreaser when you clean your piece. You wanna make sure you get all the oils off of the piece. Um, so that you have good adhesion with your paint and you can use Dawn dish soap as we're using here. Um, Crud Cutter is a good one. Uh, Dixie Bell has a product called White Lightning which is good. And then after the piece is thoroughly cleaned and rinsed, we're going to sand down. In this case we're sanding down the top and we're just really kind of giving it a scuff sand just to help improve the adhesion of the paint. The top of the nightstand was a little bit more damaged than the dresser. Um, apparently somebody wasn't using coasters and so we had some bubbles and stuff in the finish so we had to sand a little bit extra on the top of this to make sure we got everything level and then as you'll see in a little bit we're going to put some extra primer on there to help make things right. And for the rest of the piece we're just going to do a quick scuff sand. We just want to give a little tooth to the finish for our paint to adhere well. Today we're going to be using the Rust-Oleum Universal Bonding Primer. Normally we would use the Rust-Oleum 2 times cover. Um, however, everybody seems to be out of that right now, so we just grabbed this can. And that little handle you see us using, that was actually sent to us by one of our viewers from our Amazon wish list. And it's just an awesome little piece to attach to your can. Uh, really lets you control your spraying easier. Makes it much easier on the fingers too, because you're not pushing that little button all the time. We normally remove all the drawers and we set them down on the ground when we prime. Um, we don't do them with the drawers in. However, in this case, we're going to try it with the drawers in. We've seen many other people doing that, thought it was a good idea. And um, so we're going to go ahead and do this with the drawers in. We're putting tape across the top and the sides, just a couple of uh, widths of tape. That's going to help prevent any of the primer when we spray it from getting into the drawers. Um, or on the back side or on the sides of the drawers. Hey, if you guys are liking this video so far, it sure be appreciated if you'd hit that thumbs up button. We're trying to get this out to as many people as we can, new viewers, people who haven't even discovered us yet. And the more likes we get on the video, the more YouTube will share it out and show it to people who've never even seen our channel yet. So that'd be appreciated. And while you're at it, 
hit that subscribe button. You'll get notified of all of our future videos and when we post them. Appreciate you guys. So I'm guessing that this furniture was probably one of those um, that was delivered with some assembly required and the screws are missing in this bottom shelf uh, that screwed the shelf into the legs. So I went to replace the screws and realized that there were never any holes in the legs. So I have a feeling whoever originally put this together just never either had the screws or bothered to put them in. So we went ahead and installed those screws and it just tightened up the whole unit, made it nice and sturdy. And then we also had one of these little, uh, I'm not sure what you'd call this. It's like a little rubber grommet that fits on top of the rail for the drawer to glide on. It's kind of a drawer glide um, and it had come off. So I straightened everything out on that and we put that back in so the drawers would sit level. Oh, okay. Am I on? You're on. Okay. So the next thing we're doing here is we're just giving a quick scuff sand over the primer just to make sure everything is smoothed out. Sometimes when you spray the primer, it has kind of a rough surface. And we just want to take some fine sandpaper. I think I'm using a 220 here. And we're just running it over all the primer just to make sure it's all smooth. Give us a nice finish on our... Uh, final coats of paint. We washed off the hardware in some Dawn Disc Soap, wiped it all down and dried it, and now we're just spraying it with some um, Krylon Gold Leaf Enamel. And these brackets, we're going to be using these, and we're painting those gold also, and those are all the screws that are going to screw in those brackets. So we're just touching up making sure that we have all the heads of the screws are going to be gold so that they all match. And you'll see in a little while what we're going to be doing with these brackets and how we're going to use this for part of our design. And we're going to be using the Sherwin-Williams Emerald uh, line of paint today. This is a exterior trim urethane paint. Yeah, it works very well on furniture. Uh, we do not recommend using a uh, latex interior paint. It just does not stick well, it tends to come off very easily or peel off. So we always recommend using either a furniture paint like Dixie Bell or Melange, um, one of those types of paints. Or there are a few paints like this Sherwin-Williams Emerald line um, that works very well for our furniture. Because we've always sprayed this paint and not brushed it on, uh, you'll see we're using what we call the brush and roll technique. We brush it on and then we go over it with a roller just to uh, take down some of the brush marks. However, we did find out later um, that we really didn't need to do that. This paint self-levels very well, but we are doing this inside. Yeah, as the weather's getting cold, and that's why you see us now inside putting our paint on.
Ah, crap. So here we're going to start applying the second coat of paint, but I want you guys to notice how that first coat really doesn't cover. It looks pretty bad, and that's generally what happens with any of these paints when you're painting furniture. It's going to look like a hot mess with your first coat, so don't worry about getting complete coverage on that first coat. You just want to get a coat on there. We like to call that a bonding coat. And then your second coat, you will notice that the coverage is way, way better, and generally two coats will do it. Sometimes you do a little touch-up, Occasionally you might have to do three depending on the colors you're using, but the first coat's always going to look like a hot mess. And then once you do your second coat, everything starts to come together. So we don't want to bore you guys too much with all the painting, um, but we did do a second coat on everything. And I just wanted to show you real quick when we did the drawers. Again, we put the drawers in to paint them. We found this is easiest, especially since we're now painting inside. Um, it takes up a lot less room. We really don't have the room to spread the drawers out all over the floor um, and paint them like we do in our garage. But this is a easy way to do it inside the house without having all kinds of uh, stuff taking up your entire living room even though arts does take up most of it it does save some space and it's just as easy to paint them this way as it is having them all out and on the ground So finally all the painting is done and dry and it's time to add our industrial glam. So here's all these corner brackets you saw us painting earlier. We're going to be installing these in the corners of all the drawers and we figured the easiest way to do this was to get it taped in place so that it was nice and even and then we would go ahead and drill pilot holes and then install the screws.
After the first two screws were installed, I got the bright idea that maybe we didn't need the pilot holes with these self-tapping screws. And there's a touch-up we need to do. <laughs> so, back to the drill bit. And we are going to do the pilot holes on every one of these. Obviously, to make sure that the screws go in right. We don't do any more damage and cause any more touch-ups. So once we got this figured out, it went pretty smooth. After we got the two screws in, the bracket was then held in place. All we had to do was drill for the other two holes and install the other two screws. So this was the drawer for the nightstand. We finished it up. Once we were done with that, then we proceeded to go to the dresser for the other 20 brackets and 80 screws. Once we had all our brackets in, we added the knobs and we finished the project up. So let's take a look at what we started with. And now let's take a look at our industrial glam dresser and nightstand. So in the beginning we guesstimated that we could do this for about $50 and let's take a look at the way it actually turned out. Um, our hardware uh, ran us $20, the primer was $12, the paint for both the nightstand and the dresser and including the paint for spraying the hardware came to $15 and we're going to throw in miscellaneous of $5 that's for sandpaper and just little miscellaneous things we use. So we come up with a total of $52 so we're pretty close and it sure beats what new furniture costs in the store today. So we hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, have a flippin' awesome day.